Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about economic systems. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. In the last video, we talked about scarcity and choice. Resources are scarce. That means we don't have enough land, labor, capital, or entrepreneurship. And because those resources are scarce, that means products are also going to be scarce. Those are physical products, virtual products, or services. And since resources are scarce and products are scarce, we are forced to make choices. As we'll learn in a future video, those choices have costs, and we call those costs opportunity cost. Since we are forced to make choices, societies organize themselves in economic systems, which is what this video is all about. All economic systems must have a way of answering three basic economic questions. The first question is, what are we going to produce with our scarce resources? Will we be an agrarian society with a lot of crops? Will we focus on manufacturing cars or electronics? Or will we be a service-based economy? The second basic question is how are we going to produce those items? Are we going to be a capital-intensive economy where machines and tools are doing most of the work? Or are we going to be a labor-intensive society where human beings are doing most of the work? And the last basic economic question is for whom to produce? Who is going to get the goods and services that our scarce resources have made? When it comes to deciding who is going to get the items that are made, we have to have a system of allocating those goods and services. Allocation systems could include first come, first serve, where the fastest get the goods and services they desire. We could have a lottery system where who gets the goods and services is entirely random. We could have a competition where the fastest or best get the items. We could also have a command system where somebody in charge decides who gets what. And in the United States market-based economy, Prices are how we determine who gets what. Prices are the most common allocation system in modern free enterprise and capitalist societies. In modern societies, the two most common are command and prices. Next, let's talk about the three economic systems that have a way of answering those three basic questions. First, we have traditional economies. In a traditional economy, what gets made, how it gets made, and who gets it or for whom to produce is determined by cultural custom. Now, in the United States, we are a mixed economy and we have aspects of all three of these pure economic systems within our economy. We see aspects of traditional economies with the Amish and on indigenous reservations. The next pure economic system is called a market economy. In a market economy, what gets made, how it gets made, and for whom it's made is determined by individual people. In a market-based economy, private ownership of resources and enforcement of private property rights are both very important. We have individual buyers and sellers making decisions on their own. And those buyers and sellers interact within markets. And prices drive the allocation of resources and goods and services within a market-based economy. Capitalism and American free enterprise are examples of economies that are close to a pure market system. Now, the third pure economic system is called a command economy. In a command economy, what gets made, how it gets made, and who gets what's made is determined by central planners. Those are government officials that are driving the economy. In a command economy, we are going to have public ownership of resources or government ownership of resources. There won't be enforcement of private property rights because resources will be publicly owned. And in a command economy, we are going to have lots and lots of government intervention. That government intervention comes from central planners that drive the economy. The former Soviet Union was a command economy. Now, even in the United States, we have some aspects of a command economy. Public schools, the roads, regulations we have on businesses with the Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration. Those are aspects of the command economy within the United States free enterprise system. And there you have it. That's what you need to know about economic systems. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.